Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, Joby reveals 2024 stats and delivers second EVTEL to U.S. Air Force. First commercial lander completes lunar touchdown. And GE's Catalyst turboprop engine earns FAA green light. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Joby reveals 2024 stats and delivers second EVTOL to U.S. Air Force. Joby recently revealed its financial results from the fourth quarter and full year 2024. On top of the monetary success, the plane maker also celebrated its second delivery to the Air Force. The Joby Air Taxi is a fully EVTOL aircraft powered by six motors that propel it to speeds of up to 200 miles per hour. It can carry four passengers at a time for a range of 100 miles, including reserves. The manufacturer released its fourth quarter and full year 2024 shareholder letter on February 26th. Joby entered the new year with $933 million in cash, equivalents, and investments, excluding the upcoming $500 million investment from Toyota. Significant work was put toward completing the fourth of five stages required to certify the plane for domestic commercial operations, and the company expects to achieve type inspection authorization flight tests to begin within a year. Joby also delivered its second aircraft to Edwards AFB under a partnership with the U.S. Department of Defense. The collaboration sparked in December 2020, when Joby became the first eVTOL to earn airworthiness approval from the USAF. Moving forward, Joby plans to deliver an aircraft to Dubai in mid-2025 and take up its first passengers in late 2025 or early 2026. After the break, Yingling installs first Starlink on Bombardier Global. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next Gen Minute. Yingling installs first Starlink on Bombardier Global. Yingling Aviation announced the successful completion of its first installation of Starlink on a Bombardier Global to notch a significant milestone in in-flight connectivity. The integration provides high-speed, low-latency internet access to enable a seamless in-flight connectivity experience for the business aviation market. The operator of the aircraft sought to address the demand for reliable global connectivity and selected Starlink for its unlimited data, cost-effective pricing, and ease of use. TrueBlue Power reveals 6,500-watt DC-to-DC converter. TrueBlue Power introduced its new high-voltage TC6500 DT-to-DC converter. The TC6500 converts 270 VDC to 28 VDC, to power avionics and other systems on board commercial, business, defense, and advanced air mobility aircraft. The TC-6500 is lightweight at 10.4 pounds, compact and easy to install anywhere inside the aircraft, whether inside or outside the pressure vessel. Units can be installed in parallel for increased power output and redundancy without any additional wiring needed. FAA awards Starlink contract for NAS management. The FAA will utilize SpaceX's Starlink system as part of its upgrade of communications and information technology networks it uses to manage the national airspace system. Some suggest this raises new conflict of interest concerns for Elon Musk and his role as an advisor within the DOGE. It's important to point out that most government contracts are awarded through a competitive bidding process. And in that context, note that Starlink already has contracts for satellite internet services for government agencies, in addition to private customers worldwide. 
BIS issues advanced NPRM for foreign-made UAS. The U.S. Department of Commerce's Bureau of Industry and Security has released an advance notice of proposed rulemaking that seeks public comment and information on issues related to securing data and the communications technology used in UAS made outside the United States. The action comes in response to congressional actions taken that may restrict access to some foreign-made UAS products that specifically target those from China and Russia. If sufficient reason is discovered, BIS may issue regulations to, quote, address undue or unacceptable risks to U.S. national security, end quote. That was our next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. First commercial lander completes lunar touchdown. Firefly Aerospace's Blue Ghost Mission 1 lander completed a soft landing on the moon on March 2nd. This makes Firefly the first commercial company to have its tech successfully touch down on the moon. Blue Ghost launched from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida on January 15th. 45 days, 2.8 million miles, and 27 gigs of data downlinking later, it arrived on the moon's Mare Crisium at around 2.34 a.m. on March 2nd. The touchdown was upright, stable, and within 100 meters of its landing target near Mons La Triel. The lander was carrying a wide assortment of NASA technology as part of the agency's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative and Artemis campaign. The 10 science and technology instruments Blue Ghost transported will be spending 14 Earth days in operation on the moon. For the next two weeks, Blue Ghost will be supporting NASA demonstrations ranging from subsurface drilling to dust mitigation experiments. It will also capture high-def photos of a total eclipse on March 14th and a lunar sunset on March 16th. As part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative, Firefly's Blue Ghost Mission 1, named Ghost Riders in the Sky, sets the tone for the future of exploration across cislunar space as the first commercial company in history to achieve a fully successful soft landing on the moon. After these messages, GE's Catalyst turboprop engine earns FAA green light. Welcome back. GE's Catalyst turboprop engine earns FAA green light. General Electric announced that its latest turboprop engine design, the Catalyst, has completed certification testing and received the FAA's nod of approval. The Catalyst is slated to make its operational debut with the new Beechcraft Denali next year. The engine manufacturer unveiled its plan to design an advanced turboprop nearly 10 years ago. GE aimed to create a next-gen turboprop in the 1,000 to 1,600 SHP range that could compete with the ever-popular Pratt & Whitney PT-6. Its ATP first ran in December 2017 and was officially dubbed the Catalyst in 2018. 23 engines, 190 component tests, and 8,000 hours of operations later, the Catalyst finally received FAR Part 33 certification from the FAA. The testing process took much longer than initially planned due to the regulator adding more than 20 requirements to its certification standards since the last generation of turboprops earned approval. These delays forced Beechcraft to push back the entry of service of its Denali, which will be the launch partner for the Catalyst. Denali and Catalyst will now be taking the stage in 2026. The Catalyst reportedly allows customers to save up to 18% in fuel and fly up to 10% faster in cruise. Depending on the gearbox version, the engine can put out anywhere from 1,200 to 1,400 shaft horsepower. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.